Thank you very much for joining us today. Today, I'd like to talk about purchasing for work tickets. So our agenda is pretty simple. We're gonna talk about how to create purchase orders from work tickets parts entry. We're gonna talk about linking purchase order lines to work tickets. And I'm going to introduce you to the component exception manager in Sage 100 Manufacturing for centralized purchasing. So let's get started with creating purchase orders from work tickets parts entries. So here I am in Sage 100. I'm going to go ahead and create a work ticket so that we have one that we can look at. So I'm gonna to go to sales order entry, create a new sales order, select a customer, select my work ticket class, go to the lines, choose my computer system, check the box to create a work ticket and let's sell 10 of those and create the work ticket. So as you've seen in other segments probably, this work ticket was created from a template. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the work ticket so we can look at the information and all this information came in from the template. This particular work ticket has six steps. I'm gonna choose step 10 and go to the parts entry tab. So these are the parts that I need for this particular step. Let's go ahead and highlight this board and take a look at information associated with this particular item. As you can see down below, we currently have 22 of these items in stock, but there's only, there's less than zero available. We have minus 37 available and we're not re expected to receive any more. So we might decide that we want to buy this item specifically for this work ticket. So understand that when we do purchasing of inventory items, the items could be purchased directly to inventory, and then the items could be taken out of inventory and issued to the work ticket, either through parts entry or through time tracker entry and parts issues. Or we can buy the items directly for the work ticket and create the PO accordingly. So what we're gonna do here is with this line highlighted, just click the button here that says create purchase order and it knows the item. It knows who the primary vendor is for this item and we can select a different vendor if we wish. We have access to other vendors. It knows the quantity. We can calculate a date required based on scheduling if we have that enabled. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add to a new purchase order. Additional information here is the date required. We'll go ahead and choose our shipping method. We can put in confirm to those kinds of things. And I'll just say, okay. Now what we have is a purchase order that was created that has this item on the line. And that line is linked to this line in the work ticket. And if we look down below, we can now see the purchase order number and the vendor required date, et cetera and the quantity ordered is the same quantity that was on the work ticket. We even have a hyperlink to that PO if we go, want to go look. So I'll go to click on the hyperlink, it'll open the purchase order, go to the lines and you can see there's the item, quantity, unit cost, and it is linked to this work ticket and step. So very simple. But let's expand this a little bit. Let's go to this line and we'll do the same thing. Let's say cut purchase order. Another option that you can do here is you can choose multiple items and you can create a purchase order with multiple items on it that will link to these lines. Now my vendor here for this particular item is 01 master. So I can select the check boxes for the items that are typically come from 01 master and we could select an existing PO, create a new PO, add to a new, or add to a hold. A couple of things to be aware of. If we add to a new, it'll add to the first new purchase order that it finds. But again, I'm just gonna create a new PO. So we'll do that. Finish that up. And as we look at the lines, you can see that purchase order 272 now has all of these lines on it. So once again, if we 
use the hyperlink and drill into the purchase order, you can see we have these items with all of these items linking to the work ticket line. Well, now that we've looked at how to create a purchase order for work ticket parts entry, let's talk about linking the other way where we start with the purchase order. So now we're gonna talk about how to link purchase order lines to work tickets. Here I am back in Sage 100. Once again, for just simplicity's sake, I'll go ahead and create another work ticket here. So we have one to, that we can deal with. It'll be essentially the same one that we just did a moment ago. We'll select a customer, our work ticket class, choose the same system that we're gonna sell, create a work ticket, we'll do a quantity of 10. And we'll go ahead and create the work ticket from the template. And we'll go ahead and say yes to edit the work ticket. So just like last time, I'm going to go ahead and look at step 10. And let's look at the parts entry for step 10. So we have these items and we want to create purchase orders for them probably. So instead of doing it from here, what we're going to do is go to purchase order entry. So I got to close this window, so I'll accept it. And our work ticket number is 1727-01. Let's go ahead and close that. Close that. And we'll minimize that for a moment. So now let's go to purchase order entry. So I'm going to create a new PO. 17, uh, excuse me, 273. We'll choose uh, 01 Borg as our vendor. We'll go to the lines. And I'm gonna select this item right here. Now notice on the line, and you saw this a moment ago, I have the work ticket field brought up into the primary grid. And I can just select the work ticket and the step here. So 1727-001-10, and we can go ahead and put 10 on order here. Okay, and we'll accept that. All right, let's go ahead and minimize that for a moment. Let's go back to our sales order entry and let's call up our work ticket. 1727-01-001. And once again, we'll look at the step 10. We'll go to the parts entry. There's my item. And you can see that it linked that line on the purchase order to this line on the work ticket for PIA, for, um, this purchase order. So once again, we have the hyperlink to the PO, but you can see it right here, purchase order 273. I wanna show you one other thing. Let's go back to the purchase order. So here's our purchase order entry. I'm gonna call that PO up and let's add some other items. So I'm gonna add this uh, item cabin here not select a work ticket, we'll put in 10. And let's choose another item here for this purchase order. And let's put uh, 10 of those on here as well. Well, when the cursor is in a blank line, there's a button at the bottom of the screen that says link to work ticket. And these are the two items that are on the purchase order that are not currently linked to any work ticket, so it, they are listed. We can select the sales order number, 1727, and we can choose the work ticket. Now, it'll show us the work ticket number and the step number. And then I can choose which of these lines that I want to link. So I'll go ahead and choose them both and then choose link lines. Now, this one already exists and this one already exists. So this one is an existing line, so it linked the existing line, this one created a new line. So 
under notice that when I did this link, there was an option to link lines or create new. So if I create new, it will create new lines on the work ticket, even if it's the same item that's already on the work ticket. But let's go back and look at our work ticket again, and let's just let's look at our linking. So go back into sales order. Let's go to sales order entry. I'll toggle this to look at the work ticket so I don't have to drill into that. Let's go ahead and call it up. Go to step 10. And look at parts entry. So this item is also linked to PO 273, but notice that this item has been added to the parts entry. So, so just to summarize here, you can be in parts entry, in work ticket entry, and you can create POs for any of the items that are that are listed there. Or you can go to the purchase order and create POs, and then you can, after the fact, link to the work tickets. If you go to the purchase order and after the fact link to work tickets, the items that are on the purchase order can be added to the parts entry or the items on the purchase order can be linked to existing lines on the parts entry screen if the items are the same. So you get to choose. And point of processing here, if you have a line on the purchase order that is linked to the work ticket, when you do the receipt of goods, it is not going to receive the items into inventory. It's going to receive the item to the work ticket. It'll update the quantity used box here, quantity used field, and the cost will then roll th through into work and in process. Instead of debiting inventory, it'll debit work and process. Now, technically, and this is something I actually like a lot about Sage Manufacturing, it will do two transactions. It will receive the goods into inventory and then issue them to the work ticket. So be aware of your costing methods as it's doing this as well. But It'll take the item and put it directly on the work ticket. There's no subsequent issuing of the item that you need to do when it's received to the work ticket. Well, now that we've talked about how to link purchase order lines to work tickets, let's take a look at another function within Sage Manufacturing called Component Exception Manager. Here I am back in Sage 100, and once again, just for funs and grins to make sure that I know what I'm dealing with here, I'm going to create another work ticket. So this is getting a little redundant and I know that, sorry about that, but let's go ahead and create another work ticket quickly for the same thing. We'll go to the lines, choose our computer system, say yes, we want a work ticket, our quantity is 10, and we'll let it create the work ticket. And for this purposes, I don't need to look at the work ticket, so I'll say no to edit. And you can see with the eye open, we can see all the components. But we'll just accept that. Now I'm going to go to manufacturing. And on the main section in manufacturing is component exception manager. Now component exception manager has a strange name, but it's basically a centralized purchasing tool. I'm going to clear my selections from doing this earlier. So this is a centralized purchasing tool, and it can be used to purchase items for inventory based on stock levels, reorder points, those kinds of things. And it can be used for purchasing items based on work ticket demand. So for this demonstration, I'm going to choose the plan by work ticket, and I'm just going to choose that work ticket I just created. So now it's uh, work ticket 1728. So I'm gonna choose the work ticket. I can have a cutoff date. I can include lead times, those kinds of things, but I'm just gonna generate a work file. And without a cutoff date, this could take a while if you have a lot of data, but I don't. So this now allows us to, to edit manufactured items and let it create work tickets or let us create purchase orders. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit purchase orders. And what you're going to see here, because I only chose that one work ticket, are only the items that I need to buy for that work ticket. And these are the only, the only items that we don't have sufficient stock for. Up above here, 
we have lots of drop downs where I can choose different things here. I can show this information for all items only by product line, sales order, et cetera, and including work ticket. Now, again, since I chose the one work ticket, I only have the one. So we have those. So as you can see here, we have our two items. Uh, we have the primary vendor, the unit cost, the quantity to buy is two and nine, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in this grid, you could change the vendor that you're gonna purchase the item from. You can change the unit cost and the quantity. So you can look at this information and, and say that we need more, we need less, whatever the numbers are. You can put it on hold, which means it won't create the PO or leave it off hold, which means it will. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and leave this as is. Now we have two different vendors, two different items, two different vendors. So it's going to create two purchase orders. To create the purchase orders, all we do is say create POs. And we are going to create new purchase orders. So we push that button and it now creates the POs. Because the purchase orders are now created, there's no longer any demand for these. And so they go away for items to buy. Now you can say show all or no requirements, whatever. But let's go ahead and cancel out of component exception manager. And let's go to purchase order entry. So we're gonna to go to purchase order entry. And you'll see now there are two new POs. Our last PO was 273, here's 274. And the one item, and here's 275 with the one item and the quantity of nine, prior one has a quantity of two. Now notice, and this is very important, with Component Exception Manager, these lines are not linked to the work tickets. Even though we, we purchase the items based on the demand of the work tickets, they're not linked to the work tickets. So be aware of that. They are gonna come into inventory and then you can issue them out. So Component Exception Manager is not just a purchasing tool to pull items to go onto work tickets. It's again, a global, centralized purchasing tool, much like MRP in Sage 100, except MRP doesn't create purchase orders. MRP can create work orders, but not purchase orders. So this is a great tool for kind of centralized processing. So just like we looked at before, if you want to link the lines from your new POs to the work tickets, you can use the link functionality, or you can go line by line and put the work ticket number in. So it's pretty cool. Component Exception Manager is really, really cool. Let's take a look at it again, just to show you what I mean about it being a centralized purchasing tool. So I'm gonna open it back up again, choose it by inventory, generate a work file, and then look at purchase items. Now you can see that it's looking across all items, all demand, and these are items that need to be purchased whether they're required for work tickets or not. It knows unit to measure conversions. It knows uh, reorder points, all of that kind of stuff. So once again, component exception manager can be used for centralized purchasing. To review, we talked about creating purchase orders from work ticket parts entry. We talked about linking existing purchase order lines to work tickets or linking lines to work tickets as we're creating the POs. And then we also talked about using Component Accepted Manager for centralized purchasing. You can find us obviously on YouTube. We're on LinkedIn. Our website is www.nimsassociates.com and you can contact us at erp at nimsassociates.com or you can call 877-454-3200 extension 6346. Again, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it.